You're still watching the live edition of Business Today from the nation's capital here in Venduk. And available statistics indicate that the export of Namibian products to the United States stood at 207 US dollars, while imports from that country stood at 263 million dollars. Now, US goods trade deficits with Namibia was at 56 million US dollars in 2013. <coughs> The two countries continue to cooperate in various fields, as witnessed during President Hagi Gingop's recent visit to the United States. Now, that was last month. Now, to expand on this, that's the Namibian and U.S. trade relations. I'm joined here in the studio by the Namibian ambassador to the United States, Mr. Martin Najamba, as well as the State of Michigan mm -hmm. Honorary Consul, Mr. Kano Smith. Gentlemen, it's a pleasure having you here in the studio. Thank you. Honored to be here. Thank you. Ambassador, let me start with you. I'm tempted to ask you about your overall activities, but let's start with the city of San Antonio, where we see the president also paying a visit during. Talk to us about this city. What makes it so significant that you decided to include it as part of the president's program this time around? Well, um, San Antonio <clears throat> is a city in Texas uh, that has built um, a very good uh, and strong relationship uh, with the Embassy of Namibia in Washington. Mm -hmm. uh, and this relationship uh, was not built yesterday. Uh, it started a long time ago. And we have made uh, quite a number of uh, achievements and, and, and headway in our relationship with the city of San Antonio. So uh, when the president was coming to the United States to attend the UN General Assembly, we thought of organizing um, side programs for him. Uh, and the reason for going to San Antonio was for us to bring our relationship to another level, to a high, higher level, so that we show our seriousness and our readiness to work and cooperate mm. with our friends in San Antonio. We'll explore some of those uh, areas in uh, which Namibia or Namibian entities can cooperate. But recently, we also saw the appointment of Mr. Smith as the honorary counsel to the state of Michigan. What necessitated that appointment? Well, the appointment wasn't uh, recent. <laughs> uh, he, has been, he has been honorary counsel for how many years 2009. now? 2009. 2009. Mm -hmm. yes. So the honorary counsels play an important role in assisting the embassy and the government back home. Uh, to promote our country uh, in the U.S. and to promote, in particular, trade uh, in investment mm. between the two countries. So with the scarce resources that the embassy has, it, um, we thought of uh, engaging willing and ready uh, nationals of the receiving country to assist us in this endeavor. Mm. Uh, Mrs. Smith, let, let me now turn to you. <coughs> Your connection with Namibia uh, predates the, the 2009 that we just uh, referred to. Mm -hmm. uh, but in this specific role, what are some of those things that have kept you busy since your appointment? Well, the primary thing that uh, I've been involved in has been assisting uh, the ambassador to uh, help identify areas where Michigan businessmen and women uh, could possibly uh, invest in, in those particular areas. Uh, some of the areas that we have been successful in getting people to travel to Namibia uh, is in the area of housing, uh, solar energy, uh, clean water, and uh, as well as several universities have established uh, memorandums of understanding with the Polytech as well as Uni Uni University of Namibia. So in that regard, what I continue to do as well as the other honorary council, is to look at what are the resources within our state, uh, both public and private, and how do we bring those resources uh, to Namibia to assist in whatever capacity we can. Mm. You've just made reference to the agreements that have been signed, but have we seen the implementation, the practical side of these uh, agreements? With the Polytechnic, yes, uh, and uh, as well as UNAM, uh, I should say that uh, Eastern Michigan University, which is one of our smaller universities uh, in the state of Michigan, had a collaboration with UNAM in the area of its English department, where they brought in several teachers uh, in the uh, professors at the, uh, from the Department of English to assist uh, the English department at UNAM uh, increase capacity in terms of training as well as uh, language uh, 
instruction so that students could, uh, once they graduate, uh, would be a lot stronger in the, not only the articulation of the English language, but in writing, because a lot of those students then go out and become teachers. And it requires a teacher to have the language skills as well as the uh, technical and uh, uh, intellectual capacities for their particular subject to inspire their young people. Mm -hmm. uh, with Wayne State University, um, we had a collaboration with the Polytech where we brought over nine students in March to witness the inauguration of uh, President Ganga. Uh, with um, Michigan State University, which is the largest and oldest agricultural college university in the state of Michigan as well as the United States, they have come and assisted uh, various entities in Namibia in the area of commercial uh, farming as well as what they call trying to inspire young Namibians be to become agricultural entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So yes, some of those things have, uh, uh, have worked very, very well, mm -hmm. and we're looking forward to others. Ambassador, you earlier on referred to the number of visits that you have made to, to the city of San Antonio. What are some of the things that have emanated or have resulted from these interactions that you have had with uh, business people there or interested parties? What um, I can um, refer to that has uh, happened concretely out of these visits is the agreement that was signed um, between the city of San Antonio and the city of Venduk. Mm -hmm. Our mayor of the city of Vinduk traveled to San Antonio in April this year uh, to sign this agreement with his counterpart. The discussions to conclude this agreement took a bit long, about five years or so, but here we are, and we have that agreement. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the things that would expect it, this cooperation agreement between the two cities? What assistance or what cooperation is likely to emanate? E economic uh, cooperation. Um, bilateral trade uh, between the two cities, uh, cooperation in the area of uh, tourism, uh, education, uh, environmental management, uh, and health uh, services and community services. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the areas that, um, that have been covered by this agreement. Gentlemen, we're taking a short break. We'll continue with our discussions looking at the relations between Namibia as well as the United States. Now, Business Today continues in a moment. Stay tuned. Business today continues, and we're still talking about the U.S.-Namibia trade relations. Uh, Ambassador, there's one program that, uh, of which Namibia is also a beneficiary, and that's the, the AGOA. Um, it was supposed to have ended, but it has now been uh, renewed. What are the opportunities there? There are great opportunities for Namibia, <coughs> and as you said uh, correctly, uh, the program came to an end, but we, uh, the African um, members uh, or beneficiaries of this program, have worked very hard uh, with the administration and the members of the Congress uh, to have this program extended. Uh, it has now been extended for another 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, it's now another opportunity for us to try and make use of, the, of this program for the benefit of, uh, of our country. Um, <clears throat> so far, it has been going on very well. 
Um, and we just need to identify specific areas uh, of focus for us in this program. Mm. But you have those in mind. What are some of those? Yeah, well, uh, we have to, to take advantage of the regime uh, that allows us to export goods mm. into the U.S. market uh, duty-free and quota-free. Um, we had here the apparel industry um, that worked very well at that time, but it is, it is no longer, uh, I think, uh, it is just collapsed, mm. basically. We need to revive that, I believe. Um, and then we, look at, we need to look at other products, agricultural products. Uh, we, are, we have been discussing um, about the, the beef, uh, taking our beef into the U.S. market. It, it took a bit uh, long, of course, not a bit. It took a long time for us to, to, to conclude that, uh, that discussion, about nine years. Mm -hmm. So we hope to uh, push on that uh, so that we, we find conclusion. There are other products like uh, our grapes um, that we are also trying to, to bring to the U.S. market. The fish, fish and fish products. Uh, some of those products we can uh, bring to the U.S. market. As Namibians await the implementation or the actual opening of this opportunity, how should they prepare themselves so that they can take advantage of these opportunities? Well, education is the key. Uh, we need to educate our people and make uh, information available to them about this program and the benefits that are there for us. Mm -hmm. So um, it's basically up to us to, to do that. Mr. Smith, mm -hmm. the, the, the state of Michigan is quite renowned for the automobile sector as well as the agricultural sector. What opportunities are there for Namibian businesses? Well, one of the exciting areas um, is the area of, of, of the electric car that's beginning to gain uh, quite a bit of traction and uh, a number of vehicles are already on the road and it seems to be uh, the wave of the future in terms of uh, everyone's concerned about the environment and clean energy, et cetera. So uh, there are going to be opportunities in the area of, of manufacturing of uh, electric batteries for these vehicles. So when you, when you think about the possibility of, of Namibia being a destination for these uh, suppliers, for these various new uh, vehicles that are going to be coming onto the market, then we have opportunities to set up manufacturing operations uh, that, of course, create jobs and provides uh, the, the kind of income uh, for Namibians that is, is absolutely critical. So there's going to be a lot of synergy in the automotive industry. And I should say thanks to President Obama, which rescued the automotive industry, and in doing so rescued Detroit as well as the, the, the region, because now the whole region has come back alive. In an earlier insert we played, we, we looked at the, the benefits of conservancy, and that's something that interested. Is that a, is that an opportunity, hopefully, for trophy hunting and all these uh, benefits? Well, there's always going to be trophy hunters. Americans like to hunt. I mean, that's one of the biggest debates going on in the United States right now is ownership of guns. And uh, the ambassador can speak uh, more uh, uh, acutely about how the trophy hunters, particularly from the state of Texas, Mm -hmm. um, a couple of members of our delegation uh, are actually uh, out doing not trophy hunting per se, but you know I guess they call it field. Uh, they're going after mm -hmm. the uh, the uh, uh, Elons and other kinds of smaller game, not mm -hmm. the actual big five. But just as important is that one of the other individuals, one of the individuals that uh, came fr with us uh, from the state of Texas. Uh, did a great lecture at the University of, of Namibia School of Medicine yesterday on, on surgery. So those kinds of exchanges continue to happen. Mm -hmm. Ambassador, you, have, you are here with the business delegation. Who comprises this delegation? Uh, we have business um, people from the U.S., but we also have from Canada. You know, as you know, we also cover Canada. Mm -hmm. So when we put this uh, delegation together, we invite uh, Canadians as well to join us. Uh, the, it's, it's a multi-sectoral delegation. Uh, in the past, we used to organize trade missions with a focus on a particular sector. But with uh, interest expressed in various other sectors, we decided to open up. So you have, for example, uh, interest um, in the area of energy. Uh, you have interest in the area of health. You have interest in the area of uh, information and technology, uh, renewable energy, and so on. So various interests uh, in this agribusiness as well. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, as we draw into a close of the, uh, this interview tonight, uh, MCA is one program that also came to an end during your time. Is that done and dusted? All gone? Well, I, I <laughs> that's what we were told. <coughs> um, but uh, I, I must say that the MCA program was a great success. Uh, a great success, and we ran this program ourselves. It's one of the few successful stories of this, of this uh, program. It covered in our country uh, three areas, mm -hmm. uh, education, um, tourism, and agriculture. And in the education sector, uh, we received quite a number of uh, textbooks. And we also had uh, teachers uh, retrained uh, in, in, in mathematics and, and science subjects. Um, and we also had some schools and classrooms refurbished. <clears throat> so it, it was a great success. Mm -hmm. And we were hoping to have it uh, continued but uh, unfortunately, we have been uh, classified as a middle-income middle country. Mm -hmm. And that is a classification that um, uh, denied us uh, to continue benefiting from this, mm -hmm. from this program. Mr. Zbe, after this, uh, your visit now, the next time you come back to Namibia, what are some of the things you would want to report on as far as progress is concerned? Well, one of the areas that uh, we haven't touched on a great deal is just the whole area of tourism. Uh, and I continually, as well as the uh, number of people who have traveled uh, to Namibia, to promote the countries in terms of its beauty, in terms of being able to see wild game. So what I would like to see is the continued uh, exchanges of, of people coming to Namibia in all of the areas that uh, we find to be critical. Tourism, uh, manufacturing, coming in to see about manufacturing, setting up, setting up manufacturing opportunities, uh, prefabricated housing, uh, water, and as well as food security. Mm -hmm. When you engage business people there at uh, conferences and all this gathering, what do you make of their knowledge of Namibia or even the SADC region? No, they, they know um, about Namibia. Um, and uh, of course, a lot needs to be done to educate them further. Uh, our region is well known because of the natural resources that we have and also because of the peace and stability that we have in this country. Mm -hmm. So that is our selling starting point to sell mm -hmm. our country. And we, we, we tell them that we have got the resources available, but we lack the necessary skills and, and, and capital to transform those resources mm -hmm. uh, in, a, in a manner that will be benefit our people. Mm -hmm. So we want them to come to Namibia to set up shops and so they can create jobs for our people and add value to, to our program, to our Very pro briefly, products. Yeah, but, uh, how long is your current program and what are some of the activities that are still left of it? Uh, the program started on Monday uh, with a seminar which was uh, officially opened by the Minister of, uh, of uh, Fisheries and Marine Resources and Acting Minister of uh, Industrialization, Trade and uh, SME Development. So it was a very good uh, opening um, for, the, for, the, for the mission. And then we had one-on-one -on -one meetings with, with between Namibian counterparts and, and the American and Canadian counterparts. Those meetings are going on until Friday. Mm -hmm. That will be the last, the last day for the, for, the, right. for, the, for the mission. Gentlemen, I thank you so much for making time and talking to us here on Business Today. Thank you very thank much. You. Namibian Ambassador to the United States, Martin Ajamba, as well as Mr. Kanu Smith, who is the Honorary Counselor to the State of Michigan, talking to us about the overall trade relations between Namibia and the United States, as well as some of the individual programs that uh, Namibia and the U.S. have uh, undertaken, as well as some of the prospects for the future. Now, Business Today continues in a moment. Stay with us. <laughs>